welcome back. Uh, so, we were discussing Borel sets, right? We are going to discuss Borel sets, Borel sigma algebra. Right. So, we said that, so we were looking at the 0 1 interval, I took omega equal to 0 1. So, why I took open here and closed here, we will do not worry about it so much. So, at this point, so I took this uncountable sample space omega equal to 0 1 and I so, one thing I said is that if you consider all possible subsets of omega, it is too complicated, too large a sigma algebra to assign even a uniform probability measure on, right. Remember that it is an impossibility result. So, we started out saying that uh, we cannot do with such a large sigma algebra 2 power omega. So, we need to settle for a simpler, smaller sigma algebra, right. The so we we said that the sets are of interest to us are in fact the open intervals, right? So we wanted to keep intervals as being interesting, right? Sub sub intervals of uh, zero one being uh, interesting. So we said C naught uh, is the collection of of all open intervals. Intervals contained in omega, all right. So I took this collection and then I said the sigma algebra generated by this open intervals is your Borel sigma algebra, all right. In other words, the Borel sigma algebra is the smallest sigma algebra containing all open intervals, right. So, if there is any sigma algebra on omega which contains the open intervals, the Borel sigma algebra is a sub sigma algebra of that, right. Is this clear? So, now and elements of, uh, so this is denoted by scripted B, right, because it is a collection of uh, subsets and we we have to so and elements of this b are called borel sets okay it's as simple as that so what is the borel set it's an element of the borel sigma algebra and the borel sigma algebra is the sigma algebra generated by open intervals on 0 1 okay now uh, this borel sigma algebra is it turns out that it is not 2 power omega it's a much smaller sigma algebra than the collection of all subsets of 0 1 which means there are subsets of 0 1 which are not Borel sets, right. In fact, what can be shown is it has been proven that the, the set of all Borel sets, there are only as many Borel sets as there are real numbers or it has the same cardinality as that of the continuum, okay. Whereas, 2 power omega has a strictly bigger cardinality, right. So, it is a fairly small sigma algebra, this Borel sigma algebra. But on the other hand, what is nice about it is that it contains practically, practically all sets which are of interest to us. In particular, it contains intervals of course, but it contains also many bizarre sets, many interesting sets are included in the Borel sigma algebra. Uh, although the Borel sigma algebra is a much smaller sigma algebra than 2 power omega, it will be very difficult for you to think of a set which is not a Borel set. There exist such sets, right? there are lots of sets of subsets of 0 1 which are not Borel sets, but anything that you can normally you and I can normally construct is 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 likely to be a Borel set okay. So, it is non Borel sets are very bizarre okay they are very uh, they are only of academic interest by and large all right. So, uh, anything like this is so one thing we will prove immediately we will prove that the singleton set the set only containing one real number in 0 1 is a Borel set okay. So, let us uh, prove this proposition. Let B be in omega. So, B is in 0 1, then the singleton B is a Borel set, Borel measurable, Borel measurable set or Borel set.
So, how do you prove that some set is a Borel set? See the Borel, see the Borel sigma algebra is generated by open intervals in omega. So, the one thing you know for sure is that all open intervals are definitely Borel, right? And what is so? What is uh, if you want to prove that some other set is some set which is not an open interval is a Borel set? What do you want to prove? What do you have to prove? It should be either a comp. It should be expressible in terms of either complements or countable unions or countable intersections of of the generating class, which is the open intervals. Right. So if I have to show that the singleton is the singleton set is not an open interval. Right, it just has that one point B, right? So I am lo I am looking at this zero one interval, and I am taking some point B. Right, this is the singleton set containing that B alone is my set. So and I want to prove that is Borel, right? And the way to do that is somehow express the singleton as a either a complement or countable union or countable intersection of open intervals, right? Which is the generating class, correct? So, there is a standard way of doing that, let me do this correctly. Uh, so, you can write the singleton B, you can verify this, you can write the singleton B as intersection n equal to 1 to infinity B minus 1 over n open interval B plus 1 B minus 1 over n B plus 1 over n. Okay, so do you buy that? So I am saying that this set is equal to that set, which means I have to prove B is contained in this intersection, and nothing else is contained in this intersection. Correct. So in each of these open intervals, B is certainly contained, right? So the intersection certainly contains the element B. That is very clear. So, if you want to prove that no other element, let us say some other element h is not contained in, uh, in this uh, intersection. So, you will write h, uh, so you will if b is different from h, you will at some point n will become so large that b plus 1 by n will exclude that h, right. If even if h and b are very close together, at some point n will become large enough to exclude that h, right. And therefore, uh, you can prove that no other element is contained in this intersection. So, there is one little thing I have, uh, so, so this you will buy I think, right. So, are you okay with this intersection? Any, any questions on this? Just think about it, it is not so difficult, you just have these are standard things you should uh, get used to doing, okay. Um, so, the one little problem here is if I do, let us say I take n equal to 1. So, this intersection, this interval will be b minus 1 to b plus 1, right and this may go outside omega right. So, just to be certain I will intersect all these guys with. So, now these are all subsets of omega which are all, so they are all intersections of, so I am intersect omega is definitely Borel because say the subset has to be in the sigma, the sample space has to be in the sigma algebra and these guys are all intersecting generating class open intervals with omega this. So, this whole thing is Borel measurable right and therefore countable intersections of these borel measurable sets are in fact borel measure question uh, so no 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 so this intersection so i want to make this perfectly clear this is not a limiting operation i have said this many 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 times right so this is not to be understood as a limit of a finite union right this consists of all those elements which are contained in each one of these sets right you are not you are not limiting n to infinity or you are not taking a finite intersection and limiting n it is not what you are doing right you are considering this sequence of sets you can call it b n or whatever you want right and you are considering those elements which are common to each of these b n's and the claim is that the only such element is little b okay. all open intervals which are contained in 0 1. No, no, no. So, I am taking C naught. So, that is only for probability measure that is, but you want to have closure under all countable uh, uh, unions or intersections and I am taking the generating class to be all open intervals contained in 0 1. Okay. 
No, all C C naught contains all those open intervals which are subsets of zero. That's it. All of them. Okay, so I am saying that see there are two cases, right? So the you understood why I intersected with omega because if if my n is very small, like one or something, this this set may actually be bigger than omega. So I just want to talk about subsets of omega. So I am just intersecting with omega whenever my set is whenever this guy is going outside my sample space. That's just a hack, okay? But otherwise, these guys are subsets of open intervals in uh, open intervals in zero one. They're all Borel sets, correct? So if you intersect with omega also, you will get a Borel set, right? By definition, omega is uh, Borel measurable, isn't it? So this so this intersection that is a Borel set, and I have a countable intersection of Borel sets must be a Borel set, right? Because it's a sigma algebra, right? So I have expressed my singleton as a countable intersection of sets which are certainly Borel sets. And since the Borel sigma algebra is a sigma algebra, I have to this must be a element of the sigma algebra, and therefore the singleton is Borel. Okay. All right, is this clear? So next, so the next question is uh, so to so if from this you can uh, so for example you can next prove that so proposition you can prove that A B a set like that, right? Where A and B are both contained in so this where this interval is contained in zero one is a F measurable set. So is A B closed A B closed A open on that side are Borel sets. Why? See I only said that see open interval A B is a Borel set by construction, but I can write so if you want to take prove that that is a Borel set what would you do? Ha, you can simply so I have proven that the singleton is Borel. So I can write this as open interval A B union singleton B. So it's a union of two Borel sets. It's a Borel set, and similarly this and this. Or if you want to do it from first principles, you can still do it, right? You can write A comma B. Let me do this correctly. Is equal to intersection n equal to one to infinity. Uh, A comma B plus one by n. Open, right? So you can do that trick also if you want to do it from first principles. These are all Borel sets because they're all open intervals. But the intersection, what will happen is B will be included in all of them, but nothing beyond B will be included. You can prove that again, correct? Of course, I have to intersect with omega, right? Just to be sure that B plus one doesn't go outside omega, right? So this is a standard trick. Is this clear? Or of course you can just take union of singleton with open interval AB. That's also fine, right? So you have so all these intervals are now Borel sets, right? And anything which is a countable union of these any of these intervals or countable intersections of any of these intervals, complements of any of these intervals, they're all Borel sets. In fact, Bo in fact, the Borel sigma algebra also contains some. Fairly complicated sets. Okay, so we remember we encountered Cantor set, right? So the Cantor set, so we defined it as the set of all subsets of zero one, uh, set of all numbers in zero one whose ternary expansion can be written without a one in it, right? Only zeros and twos, right? So the so another way to a more geometric way of looking at it is to you start with this guy, so you start with this zero one interval. Okay, and then you uh, you will take the mid mid open third and remove it. Okay, in fact, you can show that all numbers here have start with the first trit, the first uh, ternary bit or whatever is will be a one, and these guys will have zero. These guys will have two. Right. So this you knock off. Okay. Uh, so you will be left with. Only zero, one by three, and 
yeah actually you have to I mean Cantor set is defined on the closed interval 0 1, but it is not such a I mean it is not such a big deal and then you will do the same thing again right you will knock off the middle third of those all right knock those off and you keep that right and then you keep doing this right again knock off the mid third of this mid third of this mid third of this mid third of this and so on right. So, you are successively removing open intervals right and the Cantor set k is the set of points that remains all right that is the equivalent geometric way of looking at it right. Uh, you can so, this Cantor set contains it will not be empty okay. So, it is not like you remove everything at some point right it has for example, you can show that 1 by 4 is a element of Cantor set it is not an empty set. In fact, we showed that the Cantor set is it has infinitely many points it has uncountably it is an uncountable infinity of points on 0 1 correct because it is in bijection with 0 1 power infinity right. Uh, good. So, this is uh, so that is the, the Cantor set. Now, this Cantor set is a fairly complicated set right it has a certain interesting property of uh, a fractal uh, self similar nature. So, no matter how much you zoom into the Cantor set it will look the same it will have this structure that oh, middle third will be missing right no matter how much you zoom in it will have this middle third missing and these two intervals and you zoom in further it will have the same structure right. So, this has a certain fractal structure. So, it is a very uh, it is a very interesting and somewhat complicated set on the 0 1 interval right it does not have any simple structure as an interval or anything it is a very complicated scattering of points right. In fact, you can show that the Cantor set does not contain any interval right, because you will chop the middle third if it did right. Uh, okay, so, this Cantor set is in fact a Borel set okay. uh, you will prove that in your homework uh, how will you prove that. Yeah, so you have to prove that either this Cantor set is uh, can be expressed as a countable union or intersection of any of these intervals. Actually, if you look at it, it's actually fairly simple. And the complement of the Cantor set, which is the set of all things that you remove, right? That is a countable union of open intervals because in the first stage I knock off that open interval, second stage I knock off two open intervals, and so on, right? So the the complement of the Cantor set k if you Cantor set is k the complement of k k complement will be a countable union of so countable union of open intervals which you know to be Borel. So, k complement is Borel. So, k is Borel okay. So, that is how you argue these things okay. So, even fairly not just intervals it also contains certain fairly complicated subsets of the 0 1 interval Cantor set being one example right. In fact, in order to construct I said there are subsets of many subsets of 0 1 exists which are not Borel right. So, in order to construct such a set you have to work very hard ok it is very difficult for you to think of a set which is not a Borel set, but they exist ok. Actually, so if you want you can look at uh, there are examples uh, of so let me so extra reading. So, I will just mention a few resources. So, this is not so I am just putting it as extra reading just for your curiosity. So, this is by no means something that I will hold you accountable for ok. So, this uh, extra reading so I will first put non Borel sets right certain so the most famous example is in terms of a continued fraction ok. There is a, a certain set of continued fractions you can actually look it up on Wikipedia all right just search Wikipedia for non Borel sets it has a certain example of a certain collection of continued fractions and the set you can show it to be non Borel ok. And there is an example of a so just going a little bit uh, more crazy there is a set called a Vitali set ok which is non measurable. Uh, which I mean this is not really immediately uh, relevant to us, but this is also a very crazy set on which you can assign no measure to this set ok is an example of a non measurable set 
So, this is a non Borel set, this is a non measurable set and finally, uh, while talking about these crazy sets probably the one of the craziest of all is uh, given by this paradox called Banach Tarski paradox. Okay. This Banach Tarski paradox is a very bizarre paradox where you take a sphere or right, just a 3 sphere uh, and then what you can do is you can divide up the surface of the sphere into some let us say 5 parts in fact 5 is enough five, you, and you can reassemble these 5 parts to form 2 such spheres of the same size it is possible it seems very bizarre right I mean you have a sphere of certain surface area and you break it up into let us say 5 parts and those 5 parts you, you can reassemble back so as to get 2 spheres of the same size. Okay, the reason all this is happening is because of this bizarre sets called non measurable sets. Okay, there is I have in the notes that I have uploaded there is a link to this Banach Tarski. Okay, this is a very bizarre phenomenon all right. So, this is all stuff that you will not be accountable for, but it certainly will find interesting. Okay, there are some really bizarre subsets of 0 1 or the surface of the sphere and they are all they are not these nice sets okay, they are all these non measurable sets. Okay, you to which you cannot assign any measure like length or area or probability or any such thing right. So, if you, if these sets were in fact measurable if you then you would get a bit of contradiction right you, how can you have the same surface area doubling right I mean some people I mean think, think of I mean think of this being a gold ball right you can generate 2 gold balls with it right. So, that is the most uh, you know uh, an appealing way of pro, pro, proposing this paradox I guess right it is all very bizarre because these pieces are very weird scattering of points which are non measurable okay so these things happen okay so that's for your own edification okay so but i hope you understand these uh, borel sets right so what did we say borel sets they include all intervals and countable unions countable intersections and complements of intervals they also include certain complicated sets like the Cantor set all right and it also I mean any pretty much any set you can reasonably think of without working too hard is very likely to be a Borel set okay that is. So, it contains sets all sets of practical interest to us right. So, it, if you want to construct a non Borel set you have to work very hard to construct one okay. okay is this clear? Okay, so, this is the Borel sigma algebra which is us which is a very small manageable sigma algebra on the 0 1 interval, but which nevertheless contains most sets of practical interest right. So, our measurable space from now on will be what omega comma b right I will only take. So, omega is this guy and I will take so measurable space that I will take from now on is omega b 0 1 okay. when the context is clear I will not write b 0 1 right when the context is not clear I will write uh, what Borel sigma algebra is ok. So, far ok so we st started off so we have kind of come up with a measurable space omega and a sigma algebra on omega which is a smaller sigma algebra than 2 power omega, but it nevertheless contains lots of interesting sets like my intervals and countable unions and countable intersections thereof right. So, now aim so now my aim so what is the initial aim we started out with I want to assign a uniform probability measure on 0 1 I said I could not do it on 2 power omega. So, I settled for a smaller sigma algebra I just kept the intervals and generated a sigma algebra with those intervals and that I ended up with b as my sigma algebra. Now, the question is can I assign a uniform measure on this Borel sigma algebra on only on Borel sets right. So, essentially if the, the answer is yes you can do it ok. Now, it is a smaller sigma algebra and I can assign a uniform probability measure on omega b. So, I will assign probability measures to only Borel sets 
So, there are many subsets of 0 1 like all these crazy said Vitali and non Borel sets right those guys I will not assign any probability measure to okay. I will only worry about Borel sets right. So, under the measure that I am uniform measure I am going to put only Borel sets will have a concept of a length or any probability measure on it for that matter right. Non Borel sets you cannot ask me what probability it is or what length it is it is meaningless to speak of the thing just like it is meaningless to speak of the area of these guys right ok. Ok, so now I have to start telling you how to put this uniform measure on omega comma b are there any questions at this point. So, so I want the following right I want to put a uniform probability measure on omega comma Borel right. So, my omega is 0 1 I have the Borel sigma algebra on it I want to put a uniform measure on uniform probability measure on this space this measurable space right. Now, uh, the now the question arises what kind of so I want so if I give you a nice Borel set let us say an interval from a b say let us say open a closed p right I know what measure I want for those sets I want it to be b minus a right the length of it right that is that is really what we started out saying right I want the property that the the measure of the interval a b should be something proportional to b minus a and I also said it should be translationally invariant right. So, I will start off saying that for the generating class or for all these nice uh, intervals I want the measure to be the length of the proportional to the length of the interval. In this case it can you can take it to be equal to the length of the interval because I mean the length itself is 1 and you will automatically get a probability measure right. So, I want to say that for these generating classes my measure should be proportional to the length, but that is not enough right I have to specify the probability measure for all Borel sets which can be fairly crazy right. I mean for if you have something crazy like Cantor set right how do you it is not a it is not like a collection of intervals right it is a very weird scattering of points, but the measure I assign should hold for all Borel sets, but I can only specify a measure for these nice intervals right. So, I have to be able to extend this measure right this uh, measure I assign to these intervals to all these crazy Borel sets also right. So, this is what our program is now ok. So, I will do the following. So, I want to take So, I want to start with a very simple collection of subsets. So, let us again take omega equal to 0 1 as usual and I take uh, f naught is the collection uh, collection of subsets of omega which are finite unions of disjoint intervals of the form a b plus the empty set ok. So, I am saying so, I am taking a collection of subsets of 0 1 which contains the following subsets ok. It contains the null set 
So, put the null set in. So, you are collecting subsets of 0 1 put the null set in first and then you put all subsets which are of the form open A closed B or finite union finite unions thereof not countable just finite unions thereof. So, a uh, typical or typical element of of f naught will be of the form a 1 uh, b 1 closed union a 2 b 2 closed union dot dot, dot some a and b n right where uh, a 1 is less than b 1 less than or a 1 is 0 less than or equal to a 1 less than b 1 less than or equal to a 2 less than b 2 dot 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 less than or equal to a n less than b n. So, f naught consists of sets which are finite unions of these semi open semi closed intervals it also contains null set. Okay. So, now what I am going to do is I am going to say that if I am if you give me an element of f naught right some set like that I am going to say it is it is probability measure I want it to be equal to b 1 minus a 1 plus b 2 minus a 2 plus so on till b n minus a n right, but I want it want to make sure that that measure also extends to all Borel sets right also to countable union this is only a finite union remember right. So, that is our program. So, that is what we have to do. Okay. Okay. So, now, so the extension of this measure right. So, I know what the measure of these guys should be right b 1 minus a 1 plus b 2 minus a 2 plus so on, but I want to extend that measure to the entire Borel sigma algebra all Borel sets. So, the way you do that is by a very fundamental theorem in measure theory known as Caro Theodori's theorem, Caro Theodori's extension theorem. Caro Theodori is a British mathematician. Okay. I will state the theorem without proving it. Uh, so, that is the main technical tool that helps us extend our what measure we want on sets of this form to all Borel sets. Okay. So, before that I want to uh, get these uh, certain properties of f naught I want to finish. So, I want to say that uh, f naught is first of all an algebra. In fact, the moment I wrote down some f naught you probably guessed it is an algebra right I mean because that is the notation I have been using all along right. I use f naught for algebra and f for a sigma algebra right. I did not tell you that at this point right I have just said f naught consists of a certain kind of sets but you can prove that f naught is an algebra. How do you prove that f naught is an algebra? Hmm? It contains phi by definition it has null set then you have to prove complements are also censored f naught. So, if you have some set like so open closed open closed right this is 0 1 and I have some set like open close open close then the complement will also have be of that form right this guy the complement is also open closed open closed and so on right. Is omega in f naught the sample space is it an element of f naught it is right because the which is now you see why I took open closed here ok. That is also an element of f naught right. So, so all these simple properties hold and how about countable unions uh, sorry finite unions f naught should be closed into finite unions which you can show right. It is a so, so it is a fairly simple homework problem I leave it to you for as a homework problem ok. So, this I will leave you as a homework I just spoke out the proof you just have to write it out ok. So, closure under complementation and finite unions ok. Now, this f naught is not a sigma algebra.
okay. So, this collection F naught that I have defined is an algebra, but not a sigma algebra. So, here is another example of a collection of subsets of 0 1 which is an algebra, but not a sigma algebra. You already encountered such an example in your homework I think of some collection which is an algebra, but not a sigma algebra right. So, this is another example is F naught this collection is not a sigma algebra although it is an algebra. How do you prove that? So, in order to prove something is not a sigma algebra you have to see the complementation will I mean that will not going to help you because I mean it is an algebra already right. So, you the only way it cannot be a sigma algebra is countable unions are not closed right. So, you can give a very simple example uh, if you take uh, let us say you take sets of the form let us say you take a n s are sets of the form z, uh, 0 comma n over n plus 1 that uh, so that will do I think if you do that n equals 1 2 dot ok. So, a 1 will be 0 half right a 2 will be 0 2 over 3 closed and so on ok. This is the sequence of sets I have are these guys in F naught. So, a n s are in F naught for all n agreed why because they are of that form no they are of this form. Now, if you take countable union countable union n equals 1 through infinity 0 comma n over n plus 1 what do you get 0. So, I am taking countable union not countable intersection right I am taking countable union of 0. So, I will the first set will be 0 comma half second set will be 0 comma 2 by 3 and so on they are getting bigger and bigger right. So, are a, so, so I mean so the point is this right. So, this union contains now you have to look at. So, you are looking at the set of all points contained in at least one of the a n s right correct. So, you can show in fact this is equal to open interval 0 1 this is open you can show that these two sets are equal ok. See the open interval 0 1 includes all points in 0 1, but does not include 1. So, you can show that this none of these a n s include 1, but for any number 1 minus epsilon 1 minus a little bit it will be in one of these a n s ok. So, this you think about ok this is fairly easy we just try and prove it vigorously. So, you get this union is equal to open interval 0 1 so, is open interval 0 1 in F naught no it does not it is not in F naught because you only have open closed on this. So, this is a not an element of F naught correct. So, here is a concrete example that my F naught is not an sigma algebra although it is an algebra ok. So, proof of 2 finally, I want to state the third property that I am going to look at the sigma algebra generated by this collection F naught. So, F naught is sets of these forms collection of sets of these forms right. So, I am going to generate the sigma algebra. So, I am going to consider the sigma algebra generated by is F naught. So, I told you F naught is not a sigma algebra right. So, I have to make it into a sigma algebra right make make it into by by which I mean consider the smallest sigma algebra that contains all elements of F naught ok which is what this is sigma F naught ok. Any guesses on what this will be? No 
no see f naught is empty set and sets of this form right i told you it's an algebra it's not a sigma algebra but in probability theory i want to work with sigma algebra so i am considering the smallest sigma algebra generated by f naught okay what it turns out is that this this sigma algebra is no different from the borel sigma algebra it turns out this is equal to b 0 1 Okay, this you can prove. So, what am I saying in effect what am I saying see the Borel sigma algebra initially was defined as the sigma algebra generated by open intervals. I am saying that even if you generate a sigma algebra by the semi open semi closed type of intervals it will still be the same Borel sigma algebra meaning that uh, the sigma of f naught is same as sigma sigma of c naught which is the open intervals okay so i have not proven it yet right so do i have the time to prove it i have 5 minutes okay let me try and prove this so how do you prove that uh, so how do you prove something like this how do you prove that the sigma algebra generated by these class of sets is no different from the sigma algebra generated by open intervals. See first of all you should recognize that this is an equality of two what kind of objects collections right. So, this is a collection of some subsets this is some other collection of subsets of 0 1. And I want to prove that this is equal to that, which means I should prove. Ha! Huh, so this is contained in that, and that is contained in this. Right? That's what I need to prove. Now, which is the easier part? So this. So le let me just write this. This guy is nothing but sigma of C naught by definition. C naught is open intervals. Okay. So this is you already know that. So how do I prove that? So, I want to prove this is contained in Borel and each Borel set is contained in sigma f naught right. So, let me try and do that. Proof of 3 to show sigma f naught is contained in B 0 1 it is enough to show F naught is contained in B right why is this. So, this is the smallest sigma algebra containing f naught. So, I am saying that if the Borel sigma algebra is a sigma algebra containing f naught then it must follow that sigma f naught is contained in B by the theorem right with the, the theorem we stated about sigma c generated sigma algebras. So, you buy this. So, if I if I prove this I prove this why? because here is a sigma b is a sigma algebra containing f naught. So, sigma f naught must be a sub sigma algebra of b. How do you prove that f naught is contained in b? So, in order to prove this I should prove that every set in f naught is a Borel set right and what is a typical element of f naught it can either be an empty set which is definitely Borel or it must be a set of this form right, but I know that half open half closed intervals are Borel. So, finite unions are Borel right. So, this is clear. So, this is easy right this you this is fairly easy I just argued it out prove that element. So, empty set is in B and also any element of f naught of this form we have proven already that they are Borel sets right. So, this follows if this is true then this is true. 
so one direction is over the one direction is very easy right now i have to prove which way i have to prove that next to show which direction b is contained in sigma f not uh to next to show uh, we proceed as follows so if you take any open interval ab which is a subset of omega okay open interval ab can be written as uh union uh let's see union n equals 1 through infinity a b minus 1 by n is that correct just like this no i mean it's something i'm writing something similar to this right so do you agree with this equation verify this okay so now what have i shown any open interval is a countable union of elements of f not right so these guys are all elements of f not correct so countable union of elements of f not will be a element of sigma f not certainly right so what does this prove this implies every element of c not is an element of sigma f not correct so i am doing this proof uh, i mean just as a practice for you i mean i think you should these you will encounter several such proofs so your so this implies c not my collection of open intervals we certainly contained in sigma f not so why is that true for any open interval ab i have written it as a countable union of elements of f not so this countable union must be an element of sigma f not fine everybody with me so then this follows correct now what this one step remains so i have identified a sigma algebra that contains c not correct so therefore sigma of c not must be contained in sigma of f not what is sigma of c not borel right this must be borel <coughs> so i have proved it both ways right so i have proved that the sigma algebra generated by sets of the form f not is nothing but the borel sigma algebra okay in fact in the in the homework you will prove that if you were to generate sigma algebras using closed intervals you will still get borel sigma algebra right so you can generate borel sigma using open intervals or closed intervals it doesn't matter okay this okay everybody with me so this lemma is important okay so lemma has three component that says that f not is an algebra not a sigma algebra and sigma of f not is a is in fact the borel sigma algebra okay so we will use this lemma very heavily to define the uniform probability measure or the lebesgue measure on the zero one interval okay which will be topic of tomorrow's lecture okay thanks <coughs>